Okay, our last uh, lecturer today is uh, Philip Rahm, from uh, representing and is part of the Philip Rahm Architects in Paris. Uh, Philip Rahm is a Swiss architect, principal in the office of Philip Rahm Architects, uh, and is based in Paris. His work, which extends the fields of architecture from the psychological to the meteorological, has received an international audience in the context of sustainability. His recent work includes the 70 hectares Central Park in Taichung in Taiwan, uh, completed in de uh, December 2018, the Agora of the French National Radio in Paris, and uh, a huge exhibition architecture for the Luma Foundation in Arles, in France. Uh, he has held a professorship at the GSD Harvard University, uh, Columbia and Princeton Universities. Philippe Rahm's work has been exhibited in, in 2017 at the Chicago and Seoul Architecture Biennals. So, please welcome our last guest, uh, Philippe Rahm. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me uh, to this uh, symposium. Um, I will talk about sustainability and architecture and climate change and I'm very proud to do this lecture in Sweden because Sweden is becoming very popular now with Greta Thunberg and uh, she's, um, uh, she's very well known in, in France today and uh, so the, the issue about climate is something that is um, of course linked to architecture and I just want to show that, but I'm sure everybody knows that, but it's just to, um, to start with this um, um, explanation. So this is the global warming. This is what we, uh, the, what we can see. So from the, 18, uh, from the 19th century, we can see that the, the temperature of the world is growing. So we are, the scientific are asking themselves why. And then they show that the CO2 uh, uh, CO2 quantity inside the air is growing too. Uh, th so this is like we can see here. And so they connect maybe the two things. They try to see if there is a connection between uh, um, the rising of temperature and the rising of uh, CO2 in the air. And so they made some model, you know, in different universities since 20 years. Or, and they show that um, this is uh, in... in in red, this is a normal the measurement temperature, and in a great a computer simulation. And when they introduce the CO2 inside the model, the computer model, so it's, it's, it's very similar. So it's why they start to say CO2 is uh, responsible for, um, uh, for the global warming. And what's happened? We know that you know, normally there is an exchange of heat uh, during the day, you receive a lot of sun, and during the night you lose by infrared uh, heat um, going by infrared to the night vault uh, to the universe back but um, because of the co2 the co2 uh, is like bumping the the infrared uh, this is transformed to the visible but it's not transformed for the infrared so it's why uh, the the infrared start to heat the co2 the, the the atmosphere and so the temperature is rising so this is a situation, and we know that it create conduct it will create a lot of uh, problem and uh, disorder and social uh, and political uh, trouble. So we have to fight against that, and we know that the CO2 is produced mainly by energy consumption, and um, and this is it's coming from fossil and uh, all carbonic source of energy. And we can see that today we only use 10 percent of renewable energy that don't produce um, CO2. But 90% is, um, is, produ is producing uh, CO2. So it means like when we are taking a shower, 90% of the energy produces CO2 and only 10 is not producing uh, uh, CO2. 
And then if we go more carefully on that, we can see that this is the uh, last uh, 2017. So uh, we can see that buildings are responsible of 36% of the green gas emission. So, um, uh, so it means that uh, as an architect, uh, of course, uh, we have 36% of responsibility into the global warming. So it's why it's becoming a very important uh, task for, for us. And then when you look more carefully of what's happened, Mainly, it's uh, during the building operations that we produce CO2, and less during the, the construction material. So it means if you are building, uh, 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 if you are constructing a building in wood or in aluminium, of course there is a difference, but it's not so important than if you don't have a good thermal insulation because it's only wood or aluminium is only in that, and this is more about uh, the consumption of energy during the life of the building. So uh, from that uh, point, um, uh, for me, um, I think that uh, we have to connect architecture with this uh, new task to fight global warming. And also architecture, of course, is linked to climate because why we need architecture? It's because it's raining, raining outside and you want to cover uh, yourself or it's cold outside and you create heat inside or it's uh, too sunny outside and you want to create shadow. So in reality, architecture, the only reason why we have architecture is to, uh, to deal with climate, to create some other uh, type of climate. And, and sometimes we forget this very simple and essential mission of architecture to, to deal and to create a climate. And so, uh, because now we need, in a certain way, to uh, reduce the energy before we change completely to green and renewable energy, maybe in 20 years or 30 years, uh, we need first to reduce the consumption of energy, um, because 90% is, is coming uh, from a carbon source. So this is some project we made based on that, uh, with the idea that um, by focusing more on the climatic issue, we can uh, redesign, uh, find new shape, uh, new form, new aesthetic, new way of living. And so this is some um, example. So the first one is uh, Luminance. This is uh, this project in Arles, for in France. Uh, this is an um, uh, art, contemporary art foundation with a Frank Gehry building that is uh, uh, narrow, uh, complete now. And uh, we were in charge of designing the, um, the interior space inside this uh, building of, uh, that was an industrial building and this uh, Anna, Annabelle Seldorf that transformed it, re re renovated it. And so we have to design the space inside. Uh, so it's uh, 2,700 square meter. And we have, um, there is some uh, sky light. And so, um, what we, di uh, we, we did, we just say we need to maybe economize the electricity inside, so we economize the uh, light, you know, like here, we don't know why we have so much light in this uh, space. Maybe we, would, we can switch off the light because we don't need really this uh, light. And this is what we say, uh, if you want to show uh, uh, some art, some, um, if, um, we know, for example, um, this is that. Depending on the type of artwork, you need more or less light. Uh, if you want to show a video, so you need a black box, or if you want... <laughs> <laughs> so if we, if you want some uh, to exhibit a, a photo paper, you know it's only 50 uh, lux, or if uh, it is oil painting, it's uh, 200 lux, or if you want to show a, a contemporary printing, uh, so it can be at uh, 1,000 lux. And so we just say uh, we will work on that. We will analyze uh, the um, the condition of the existing light inside the building and and design the space according to that and reinforcing uh, the reinforcing the uh, <laughs> re reinforcing the the, the the effect of the light by working on the incident light and also the reflection of the light uh, so um, so we made a, a model of uh, the light the sunlight uh, in uh, there and uh, so when it's um, when it's yellow, it's, so it means uh, there is a lot of light. When it's blue, there is no light. Or, and so we did a different time, and then there is an average of, 
of the light and we can see okay here or here you know it's more sunny there is more light than here so if you want to show a video it's more clever to place a video here than here you know or if you want to place a, um, a photographic uh, so it's better to to maybe to place it in the red one and not in the so so to in order to economize uh, electricity and to and so from that uh, simulation uh, we create some shape and this shape, we reinforce the light by creating, by, um, uh, because uh, the, the, the less quantity of light here in the dark area will be absorbed by a, a dark space, but dark ground, a dark floor. And then we have a gradation from, uh, from black to white. And, uh, and this becomes the master plan of, uh, of the space. And then we have some wall uh, that are painted in the same color. And uh, then it's become the, 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 the space. And we give to, for the first exhibition to four artists that receive the same quantity of uh, space, of dark space and light gray space and light gray space and white space. And, uh, and then finally, uh, we have this type of space. So it was quite strong because when you was walking, you know, you feel really the change of uh, light. Uh, so uh, and um, and also the heat was uh, linked to that. So it will really become more cool in the dark area and more hot in the warm area. And so it, it create a diversity using the existing condition, uh, the natural condition that was already there. And so it was only to play or to reinforce the. Uh, the quality uh, we can find um, in the in the building. Uh, this is a, a new project. We we have won that uh, a competition in in France for the national radio. Uh, uh, this is. Um, uh, this is this uh, building, a modern building of the 60s, and uh, uh, we are in charge of redesigning the core of the building that are uh, becoming a public space uh, because it's, it was more a pri private space. And we, and we, so it will. Uh, there is a cafe and uh, some also some public uh, radio um, uh, recording and uh, some. Um, uh, some concert uh, and things like that that will come in this space, and so we start to think where we can place a cafe inside this uh, uh, space, and so we also made a, a sun model to see, you know, the blue is where it's always under the shadows. There is no natural light here, and the red this is where there is most uh, the, the the most of the sunlight. Uh, that arrive inside the building, and so we say where where to put the cafe, and so we say maybe in the winter, it will be good to go here because it's very sunny, it's more warm, so it's good. We can have a benefit of that, and during the summer, it's be better to go in the dark and cold area uh, because you you want to cool yourself and not to receive sunlight. And uh, so we start to do a gradation from, um, uh, from hot to cold. And uh, how to do that, we, um, we reinforce, uh, we first uh, follow the line of the, of the light. Uh, and then we start to reinforce that by uh, working on the em effusivity. This is a, you know, a very something when you touch a material, if you feel cold, it means there is a high effusivity. If you feel warm, it's a, cool, it's a low effusivity. This is a speed of exchange of heat. And uh, so we say, when we go in the cold area during the summer, we want to touch cold material to cool ourselves, to, that the material will suck our energy. And when during the, the winter, we want to be in a warm area, and we want to touch materials that keep our heat on ourselves. And so this is a gradation of uh, of material from uh, you know from uh, um, uh, from st steel to uh, wool with a different uh, effusivity uh, material, and so this is how we play that. We have also something on the sound, but it's also related to to that. And then um, then this is uh, the plan, and 
And finally, we have this type of image. So uh, we have uh, uh, so we have the wool area under the sun, and then it become wood, and then it become uh, uh, it's rubber, and then it's stone, and then it's uh, um, uh, steel, and so it's uh, moving from um, uh, from a lot of light uh, uh, to uh, the darkness, and it gives uh, gradation. And I like very much to. Have uh, to offer a freedom to the people. So, if you want to go in the cold area, you are free to go where you want. You can choose what uh, different uh, um, quality of space. Uh, this is also. Uh, Something we made uh, for a um, light company, for Artemid, it's an Italian company for lighting. Uh, and so they asked us to think about a uh, new, new type of lighting li li linked to LED. And, um, and, um, and this is, uh, we, we start to, uh, to try to understand what it is, uh, the light, or what, 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 how it works. And this is the sunlight. So you can see there is a, uh, the full spectrum in the visible uh, part, and then a lot of infrared. And uh, if you look to uh, the old technique of lighting, like halogen or incandescent, you know when you it was producing a lot of heat uh, of infrared, so, uh, so you was losing a lot of money and uh, and, and energy because you was heating instead of uh, or instead of lighting. And uh, it was better with this uh, type of li light we have here, uh, see? But this, uh, fl all the, the fluorescent lighting, because all the electricity, all the energy, all the money is, um, is used inside the visible, so you don't have uh, um, uh, infrared. But you can see that fluorescent lighting creates not a, a continuous spectrum of light, but more uh, like peak of uh, wavelengths, you know, th and in reality, these peak of wavelengths are not linked to the human um, uh, eyes because we have some cone inside the eyes that perceives the, the light at different uh, wavelengths. And the old one, these, this type of light, maybe have a, a, a emit a wavelength not in the one that are perceived by the human eye, so it creates some headache or some disorder. Uh, so that was something that was quite... Um, um, there is a lot during the 60s or 70s when it was very used, this type of thing. And LED is something different. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, you, depending on the semiconductor, it creates a very a peak of, um, of, uh, of light in a very narrow uh, wavelength. And so we say, OK, we will look to the human eyes, and we can see, OK, we need this type of wavelength, these three wavelengths, to give a good quality for the eyes. So uh, because you, you feed the human eyes with what you can really see and not with some uh, uh, other wavelengths. And then we say, OK, maybe in the house we are not alone. Maybe there is an hamster, too, in the house. Maybe there is a dog, and the dog, you know, he have only two cones, so he see only at some other wavelength than the human eyes. This is the same for the hamster. Uh, the, if we have some birds, so they he have four cones, so you, you see different wavelength. And then, of course, the, the plant, if you have green plant in, in your house, uh, you know, for creating the photosynthesis, you know, this uh, uh, blue and red color, and it reflects the green. And uh, then we say we need, uh, because if we are producing a, a lighting uh, for interior house, we need to answer to all these animals, uh, all these people inside the house, not only for human. And so we, we start to look to um, all the different wavelengths link, link to the semiconductor we can find on the market today. And depending of uh, if you have gallium or synclinal, you c this is this all the all the semiconductor we can find on the market that produce LED uh, light, and then we start to add uh, all the wavelengths to give good 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 wavelengths to all the animals, each of them, and then we add all this together, and so at the end we have um, the the light and. Um, and so, uh, and the the idea is to emit energy and lighting only where we can see and not where we can uh, no nobody can see. 
Uh, so it's uh, the most healthy and the most economical uh, light if we, if we want. And so then we have a, a system to say, okay, if you are leaving the house and you keep your dog inside, you could switch off all the other and you keep the light for the dog only. And uh, so, so finally it was um, in 2015, so it was shown in Milano at the, there. And this was also an exhibition at the Artemide show, showroom about, about these different wavelengths. And then uh, the final product is this one. You can buy it. And uh, this is only f this is for human, dog, cats, and uh, plant. And you have also a night mode uh, there. And, uh, and now I want to show the, the most uh, important project we, we have worked uh, this uh, last year. We won a competition with uh, Catherine Mosbar, a landscape designer from Paris, and Rick Liu, an architect from Taiwan, uh, for a 70 hectare park in Taichung. Uh, this is uh, uh, in, uh, on the island of Taiwan. Um, and uh, this is a 2 million uh, 600,000 uh, inhabitant city. So it's bigger than Paris, but we, nobody knows Taichung. And, uh, but this, uh, it was on the site of an old airport. And uh, so we don't destroy any building for doing this uh, master plan. That, that, um, this, um, the, the park is uh, in the center of a new district of 256 hectares. And so new uh, housing, new, um, uh, new office building, and university, and a uh, lot of things will come after uh, around uh, the park. And, um, and then uh, for doing the park, we, uh, this 70 hectare park, we start to think what is the logic, what, uh, why we have to build a park in the city today. And uh, by reading you, the history of the park, you understand that the first park was the Victoria Park in London, uh, the first public park, uh, the, as we know. It was because at this time, there is some uh, studies that show that people from Bath in, uh, the, in England have a 10 years uh, longer duration of life than the Londoner. And they were thinking they were connecting things with the trees of Bath, because Bath, the city of Bath, have a lot of park. So, um, so it was Edwin Shadwick and uh, some people that you, it was published in the in re register of deaths and births and marriage. And so the people of East London, they read that and they understand that they, they, their condition is not good. And so they start to write uh, 30,000 people of East London write a letter to the Queen to say we need also a park because we want to have a better life and to have a more, uh, uh, more, um, uh, more uh, uh, year of life. And so, uh, so it's, uh, they start to build the Victoria Park in London in, uh, that has opened in 1844, something like that. And it was a moment when, um, you know, in the, at the, uh, that uh, Napoleon III uh, from France was there, and also Olmsted from New York, who is a landscape designer from Central Park, was there. And so they bring back everywhere this idea to create a big park, and it was like in Paris with the Bois de Boulogne, and all this idea of green lung. And in reality, it's, uh, it was completely wrong because it was based on, they were thinking that the CO2 is uh, toxic, but it's in reality, it was not. But, um, but so they start to do some, uh, um, some park, and, uh, and of course, the first idea, the first reason why they build park is to, for health reason, to, uh, to, to have a more life, a more uh, year of uh, life. And then the second reason is uh, cool. Uh, you can read in Alphand, the landscape designer from Haussmann in Paris, what he gives some, uh, the other uh, reason why they built park is to create a um, colder area during the summer where the people can cool themselves when there is no air conditioning during the 19th century. So they can go to the park and, and, and be under the trees and in, in a more cooling, cooler. So, 
so then we, we, I think all these ideas were uh, disappeared during the 20th century because of uh, antibiotics, because of air conditioning. Uh, we don't have any more interest into health, uh, into energy at this time. And then something happened uh, this last year. It, it is, of course, a global warming that changed completely. The, we have to be care to 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 have uh, to be care of. Um, of energy and climate, and also the pollution become quite important um, with the particle matter PM 2.5 pollution in the city. And we know since 2013 that these PM 2.5 are, are a concert. It's a real concert uh, agent. Uh, nobody know it re exactly before, but uh, we know that. So it means that pollution um, and climate is coming back inside the main discussion for architects and for the main, main uh, citizen. And so it's why we base our design on, the, on that, with the idea of uh, giving a cold uh, space for the people and also a healthy space. And so we start to work on the heat, humidity, because in Taiwan it's also humid. It's a, a subtropical climate, so it's warm and humid and polluted. And, um, and so it became the three layers of the design composition. Uh, so this is the park, start from here and, and it go until here. And so we work on three layers. So the, the first layer is the heat layers. We made a model of, uh, of the wind to understand where it's colder inside the park uh, because of um, you know, the temperature the, uh, is linked to temperature of the air, air speed, um, humidity of the air, direction light, reflective uh, light, so all these components create what we can call the perceived temperature. And so all are the same except the wind, because there is a north wind there that uh, is, it comes from the north, it's more cold, and so it can cool the city, like by convection, when you blow on the soup because it's too hot, so you cool by convection, but also because the air is colder. And uh, so we can see that where it's red, it's more windy, and when it's blue, it's less windy. So we say, okay, this will be the best, or maybe not the best, but the coldest area, and the blue one will be the warmer uh, area. And uh, from that simulation made by uh, Transsolar, a German company, uh, we transform that into, um, into a, a plan, into form, and then we materialize that with trees, uh, so it, where it's cold by wind, so we place a lot of trees to add shadow to have a double effect of cooling. And, um, and then we have a gradation of trees. And then we, uh, we see that there is some special area where it will be very dense so with trees every 2.5 meter. So it becomes like a forest, uh, and we call this place the coolia, the cool area. And uh, so we have, uh, uh, and then we have a path that connect everything. And uh, and inside the coolia, we propose to, to have all the leisure activity. And then we have the cool path that is a cool, the coolest way of moving through uh, the park. That is uh, three ki three kilometer. And then. Um, then the choice of the trees is linked to also with this uh, mission. So we have trees with a lot of leaf to create a lot of shadow, or with big leaf or white leaf to reflect the sunlight. And, uh, and then the ground too, we change the ground to have a, a cooling effect by choosing the type of ground. And then we have uh, this path with a type of... Uh, and this is some photo of uh, the park. Some of them are still in a little under construction. And we have then this uh, color to materialize that. Then we did the same for humidity. Uh, so we have to manage all the water on site, uh, all the new district water that arrives. So it creates some pound. And so far from the pond, it will be more dry. And uh, so we create the dryer and uh, the... Um, and then uh, we have some, also the ground is a very high drainage uh, ground to, to, to create a, the, the most uh, um, dry uh, space. And, uh, and then we have the dry pass. 
because you know it's better when it's dry, uh, the, when the air is uh, dry, it's better to sweat, and so you could evacuate some heat by sweating more. So it was uh, hot and dry is more comfortable than hot and, uh, and humid. And uh, so we say, okay, we, it would be a good area for placing all the sport activity because you could sweat more. And so the dry, the dry pass is the most sport uh, activity pass, so it's more complicated to, to, move, uh, to move inside. And we have another type, type of bench like, uh, like that. And then, um, uh, then we have the, the, the clearia, so this is all the less polluted area, so far from the road, far from the noise, far from the PM2.5 emission from the car. And uh, so this is this area, so we pla place a lot of trees that can catch the PM2.5, like hairy leaves or uh, uh, conifer uh, uh, trees. And so uh, we propose to have all the children activities there. Uh, because it will be less, more comfortable, and uh, so we have uh, uh, the clear, the clean pass, a clear pass that connects uh, all th that, and so it's completely flat, uh, also for baby car and for wheelchair. So it cr creates um, different type of uh, uh, of moving uh, inside the park, and so uh, finally, all to uh, these three layers together create some microclimate, so it can be warm, humid, uh, and clean, or it can be warm, humid, and, and uh, polluted, so there is a lot of diversity, so everybody is free to go where he want, maybe uh, at noon in the summer you prefer to go deep in the forest, in the shadow, and uh, maybe at uh, 6 uh, in December uh, you prefer to go in an open uh, field, so um, Uh, so this is some view of... Uh, so, uh, so we have 15,000 trees, so we, they are, we don't see them uh, really, but it will be full of trees. Of we have a lot of different pavilions also inside, and cafe, building, like we have something like not uh, maybe 30 uh, building and toilet. And then there is, a, I, I want to show two uh, special area of the park. One is a meteorological garden. Uh, this is, uh, the meteorological garden is like a, for cooling or by um, creating a diversity of uh, way of cooling. Or, uh, and uh, for doing that, we say, okay, we can do under the trees, uh, but we can also cool by convection, by blowing or by uh, evaporation, by like a fountain in Spain when you, you have evaporation, so it, it decreases the temperature of the air, or by radiation. And we have created these uh, climatic devices. Um, we can see them here. Uh, and, um, and so the cooling strategy by convection, so by blowing air. Uh, so what we have to understand also, it's, uh, uh, as I say, the problem of global warming is linked to the source of energy because we are using 90% of carbon. But if you are using only green uh, renewable energy, you could use all the energy you want. So this is quite. So uh, so it means it's what we are doing here. We have 7,000 square meter of photovoltaic panel. So we say, okay, we can use energy because we do, we will not participate to the global global warming with that. And uh, so, but we are not using. We are using only a little of this energy for the meteorological garden. All the other is also used for all the building, all the night, and, uh, the night lighting, and all the other things. And uh, so, the the first one. Uh, th so this is like all the. This energy is used for uh, activating some fan for moving the air. And for cooling, we use geothermal cooling. Uh, you know, we go five meter underground with duct, and so it cools the air. Uh, that can be 40 degrees Celsius. So you know, like here, and so yeah, every time it's uh, 25 degrees Celsius under. So we have all this uh, underground duct there, and then um, the this first device called anticyclone that blow cold air. And so we made some model to understand uh, all the, the quantity of air, the speed of air we, we need. 
and uh, and so this is some image of that. So it's blowing cold air uh, when you are under. Uh, Then we have another one, the stratus cloud, cooling by evaporation. This is something quite oh, everybody know that. Uh, you know that. So we have nozzles that uh, create a mist, and uh, because during the evaporation from liquid to gas, it took energy from the air, so it decreased the temperature of the air, so it creates a cloud, and uh, so it's uh, very efficient. Like. Uh, And then uh, we have some other, and just I want to show one that is um, uh, the cold light. It, it's uh, interesting. This is a way of cooling by creating an umbrella, but we just select, we look to the spectrum of the uh, visible light, and you can see that the less energy energy inside the, the light is inside the violet or the purple wavelengths. So this, so it means it's colder. The violet part of the uh, light is colder than the other wavelengths. Uh, there is less energy, and so we create just uh, we keep only this uh, violet part. So it's, uh, we call that the cold uh, light, uh, the cold light uh, umbrella. Um, and then. Um, The, this is another project. Uh, I will just go through. We have seven uh, square meter, and and this uh, we are creating a kind of um, a faded exterior by placing all the photovoltaic panel, and then under that we have a kind of uh, maybe more European uh, landscape because it's less hot. It receives less radiation than some other. Uh, and uh, so we have building and we have a uh, uh, hill and trees and um, and then uh, this uh, produce all the energy of the park and um, and the type of building we are doing under is all, all the way by um, uh, reducing the quantity of um, uh, of energy we need inside, so we uh, create, for example, for the maintenance center, we have um, uh, we we are creating some layers. So because normally, you know the. Uh, you know, you have a, um, today the construction is made of different layers for creating a wall. You have the thermal insulation layers, the waterproof layers, the vapor uh, barrier the layers. You have the structural layers, the physical layers, and all these layers normally are all together. But we start to split them and to create in between space between the physical layers and the waterproof layers, and uh, and so. This is in red. This is where we have thermal insulation. So we have 20 centimeters. So we have a huge thermal insulation in order to re reduce absolutely the quantity of energy for air conditioning inside. And uh, and then uh, uh, the toilet or some other uh, things are only um, outside of thermal insulation with no air conditioning, only uh, uh, only um, uh, natural ventilation and. Everything is in white uh, in order to reflect by the albedo, to have a high albedo to reflect the heat uh, back to the sky. And, uh, and so uh, this is a little, this kind of gradated uh, interior. So we don't have a, li a fixed limit between inside and outside, but we have a, a, a some uh, gradation. Uh, from more exterior to a little uh, more interior and more interior inside, and um, and so uh, this is inside. So we are covered here. We are inside the toilet, and we so we are covered from the rain, but we are still outside. And then. Uh, the material is linked to that, and when we arrive to the space with air conditioning, and so with uh, with a big uh, thermal insulation. Um, every 50 meter, we have a, a 
we have a, a sensor that measures all the temperature, the pollution, the humidity, the sound, everything. So in real time, we are creating some map for the smartphone, and so you can uh, look to where it's colder in the park and you get or less polluted. So you could also move to a less polluted area in real time uh, there. And um, and so the, I have one minute to present the climatorium. Cli uh, climatorium is a kind of museum about climate change, and this is um, uh, we have invented the program in reality because uh, we are proposing three exp three rooms uh, that are recreating some uh, space based on the heat, humidity, and pollution. So the first one is a coolium that produces the climate in real time of the high mountain in Taiwan. So, uh, so it will be always cold when you open the door. It will be like to be in the mountain on the real time. This one, the the, uh, the clearium, recreates the climate of Taichung, but without the air pollution and without the global warming. So it means we decrease the temperature inside of one degree Celsius and we decrease, we remove all the PM 2.5 for pollution. And, uh, and this one is a dry -um, And so we reproduce the most dry day of uh, the year. So we took the 21 of November, it's more dry there. And we create a kind of endless day that repeating all the day, uh, always the 21 of November. Um, and um, so this is um, uh, the, the um, dry -um and uh, and the clear -um and the and the the also the the section just to is made uh, with the same layers you know you have the physical layers the waterproof layers the thermal insulation layers that are. Uh, really creating. This is a building um, a few months ago. Um, and um, and we can see these uh, different layers and we go more deeper in the... We move through the, 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 the building by entering these uh, different layers. And then we arrive to the... This is a coolium. So it's uh, very cold inside. It's space uh, uh, um, uh, reproducing in real time the mountain in Taiwan, the Alishan village uh, in Taiwan. So it's like uh, uh, 14 degrees Celsius uh, in summer when it's uh, uh, 20, when it's 30 in Taichung. And uh, this is um, the dry uh, the dry -um. So we have the the light following the, the angle of uh, the 21 of November. And so when if you enter the room at uh, six in the morning, you will have only this uh, light that will be on. And at noon, only this one. And so it's repeating all the way. And if you are entering at midnight, you will have, you will see through this um, glass floor, you will see like it's a transparent planet and you can see the light on the other part of the wall. Uh, there and so inside all the temperature and and more the humidity will be always the one of the 21 of uh, November and then the clearium uh, this is this space so it's open to the sky but we have this air conditioning here blowing air and you, you know because the cold air is heavier than light air so we trap them inside that and uh, and this is uh, the, the end of my presentation thank you Thank you.